We are here today to do the uh, breast examination. With us we have a 69-year-old lady who has volunteered to help us to explain the breast examination. Um, Madam, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Of course, we start off with the history. She presented um, with a specific complaint which brought her to the doctor. And I'm going to ask her just a few questions as to how this presented. Um, she has told me that she is presented with a mass in her breast, um, which she picked up herself at home. How long ago did you notice that there was a lump in your breast? The history is three months ago that she picked up this mass. Has the mass changed in any way in those three months? Okay, so she noticed it early. And she says it doesn't seem to be that it's been growing much bigger in the time since she's noticed it at that stage. Which is quite important if a mass changes in size in a short period of time, it's always very worrisome. Did you have any other symptoms related to the breast? Did anything else worry you? Okay, specifically to ask would be um, other symptoms like pain. Did you have any pain? No. No pain. Cancer doesn't necessarily present with pain. Most cancers actually present pain as painless lumps, which is a misconception out there. Patients often think because it's not pain, painful, they don't think that it must be a serious problem. Other problems that the patients can present with, of course, is a nipple discharge or a itchiness or a scaliness on the nipple. So I'm just going to ask her if she presented with anything like that. So you didn't have anything coming out of the nipple, or anything related to the nipple, the nipple didn't change in direction or size or anything like that? No. Okay. Did you have any loss of weight? Have you lost weight? So she doesn't complain of any weight loss either. Um, weight loss is always a symptom to look for with any type of cancer in mind. Remember, a lady that presents with a lump, first of all, in her mind and your mind, should be to exclude a cancer. All right. Um, Start off the examination with the patient standing or sitting to, first of all, uh, in, inspect the breasts and to see what you can see um, regarding the breasts, if there's any asymmetry or any uh, subtle signs that there could be disease in the breast. So let's focus on the breasts now. And I'm going to have a look. You just keep you just keep sitting like that. That's fine. If you if you see here, you will notice that uh, both breasts look fairly fairly normal to us. Uh, the left and the right looks very similar. You have this dimpling effect on both sides, which which doesn't necessarily look abnormal. She has fairly small breasts, which make it makes it easier to pick up uh, masses in the breast. Um, the nipples are facing in the same direction. None of the nipples are retracted, there's no scaling or anything uh, on the nipples itself. They are pointing in the right direction. Often a mass in the breast would actually deviate the direction of the nipple. Um, so on inspection just like that you can actually see that there's nothing really very, very visible. But I'm going to ask her just to lift up her arms. Lift, lift both arms up. And over here you can straight away see there's a little bit of a difference uh, in, the, in the examination over here. Over here on this side we get the impression of a bit of a fullness over there. There's no skin dimpling where anything has been pulled in, but you can definitely see the skin is a little bit more creased on this side than that. And, uh, but it's a very subtle sign. Okay, you can drop that down and then I'm going to ask you to lie down. Just relax. Okay, when we start examining the breast itself, it's important to, um, uh, 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 to do it in a systematic manner. It's, especially with people with large breasts, I normally ask the patient to, to lie a little bit on their side so that the breast is on top of the chest wall so that we can uh, have something to press against. It's not very easy examining a breast that is lying next to the side here. So I'm going to ask you, first of all, we're going to examine the normal breast or the breast that doesn't have the lump. Am I right to say that this is the side that you felt the lump in? No. Uh, this is the side that she felt the lump in. So we're first, going to, first of all going to examine the normal side or the other side. So 
So I'm just going to ask it to turn a little bit onto this side, so that the breast lies on top of the chest wall. And I'm going to ask it just to put your arm above your head. Not too tightly, but just like that. And you can see that the breast mound is now lying very nicely on top of the chest, which makes it a lot easier to examine. When we examine the breast, it's very important to make sure that the whole breast is examined. And places that are often forgotten are the retroareola area and the axillary tail. So what we do is we use a systematic manner. We use the, uh, use the, the, the palm side of the fingers to examine and we feel in that, in that type of way. Pushing the breast against the chest wall, we can feel if there's any, any mass or uh, uh, um, any lesions in the breast itself. So we follow from medially all the way around all four quadrants of the breast and then we can examine here retro areola area, just make sure that we miss nothing lying behind the nipple and that seems to be quite normal. Then we also feel for the axillary tail which lies in this area over here. This feels like a normal examination to me. At this stage you can also just give the nipple a slight squeeze to see if there's any discharge or anything coming out, which doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, thank you very much. We will move to the other side now. So we just lie like that and put the arm up there. If you look carefully over here on this side, you can straight away then see that this this area is, is more prominent again compared to the other side but we will then also use our same prominent uh, or same uh, systematic examination so I'm going to use the palm side of my fingers and I'm going to feel all the way around concentrating first on the areas that doesn't have the mass and then slowly moving towards it and over here I can very clearly pick up that there is a mass um, in this area uh, in the lateral part of the breast, very close to the line of the nipple area itself. Don't forget, once, once you have felt that mass, don't forget the rest of the breast. We carry on making sure that the whole breast is examined. I will feel here behind the nipple areola complex as well, and I'll also just give it a slight squeeze to see if there's any, any nipple discharge coming out. Then I also remember to feel the axillary tail. Right, let's just now move back to the mass that we have found. When the mass is felt in the breast, it's very important to describe it just like anything in surgery. When a mass is felt, a mass needs to be described. The characteristics of the mass are very important. First of all, we would like to know the size of the mass. The mass will be judged. It's better to use a measuring tool uh, like a... Like a um, like a ruler or some measuring tape to measure it accurately. So I have got a ruler here that I'm going to measure the size of the mass. I'm just going to get it between my fingers to get each side of the mass felt. And I'm going to measure it and over here. It measures about 1.8 centimeters or 18 millimeters, which is important in staging the tumor for the size. Make sure that you measure it in, in, uh, in more than one uh, Plane so that you make sure that you've got that and we may then call them the, uh, uh, the, the size of the tumor by the largest diam largest measurement that you take okay the next thing to concentrate on is of course the other characteristics like the consistency of the of the mass over here I can feel that it is quite hard the surface is irregular it's not very well defined it is not well circumscribed uh, that is not fixed to the skin. Um, it doesn't seem to be fixed to the underlying tissue as well. If you have an impression that it could be fixed to the underlying pectoral muscle, the way to test that would be to ask the patient to put her arm into her side and press very hard into her side and then that would then tense the muscle and straight away if you tense the muscle the mass should become more fixed or feel more fixed and in this case it doesn't feel fixed you can still move it over there so I straight away know that, it's, that this mass is not fixed to the pectoral muscle okay um, of course uh, uh, all the other characteristics of the mass should also be evaluated um, the shape of the mass uh, must be I would say it is a roundish mass but not very well circumscribed as I said before, uh, 
the temperature of the mass feels normal to the surrounding tissue, but sometimes cancers or other masses can feel warmer than the surrounding area due to increased blood flow. Other characteristics to elicit will be tenderness. Is this painful? No pain or tenderness on the mass. Of course, we must also just uh, uh, um, make sure that it is, as I said, not fixed to anything surrounding the tissue and that the, uh, the edge of it must be well defined. If it doesn't have a very nice edge, then it's most likely that it could be sort of like in infiltrating into the tissue around it. This mass does give a fairly good edge, but in some areas it feels as if the edge is a little bit blunted. Remember that once you've examined the mass, it's also very important to examine the surrounding lymph nodes to see if there's any lymphatic spread of any tumour or any other reactive lymph nodes in reaction to the mass. So we will now concentrate on the lymph nodes. Often it is explained to the students to examine the, the lymph nodes by letting the patient lie on their back and then just taking the arm and relaxing the arm and then with the palm of the hand and the same way that you examine the breast to do this. But I have found in my experience that many lymph nodes are missed in this, in this way. So I would prefer to ask the patient to sit up and then we we let the patient just sit nice and straight and, and relax and then we ask her just to relax the shoulder so that these uh, pectoral muscles will relax and then we just hold the weight of the arm and then in this way we would then feel for lymph nodes and remember then that there are lymph nodes down here behind the pectoral muscle on the latissimus muscle at the back against the chest wall here and right up in the apex against the humerus. So we must feel for lymph nodes in all those places. Another way which, which can also be used to feel for lymph nodes would be to actually do it while standing behind the patient and feeling in this type of direction. Whatever, find, whatever uh, manner you find to be most, uh, most sensitive to you and where you actually don't miss anything would be the right method to use. But remember to let the patient sit up. We will also examine the lymph nodes on the other armpit as well in the same manner, but I'm not going to do it in this situation. The other lymph nodes to feel are your supraclavicular lymph nodes. Remember that the axillary lymph nodes grow up along the uh, axillary, axillary and subclavian veins and then would actually present here in the supraclavicular space. So a person would feel for lymph nodes there as well. Other lymph nodes in the neck can also be felt for as well. All right. We don't often listen to masses in the breast, so it's not always necessary to listen to it, but, um, but if you would want, want to be complete, that could be done as well. The cushion of the mass in the breast is not always done either due to the fact that it's not a fixed mass um, and uh, palpation is the most important part of the examination over here.